This program is sponsored by Safe Life Experience Concert Limited. Contact them for all your travel and tour needs as well as your events. Thank you very much for joining me once again on Conversations. Today on the Your Number One Chat Program, we are going to look at the Catholic Church in Myanmar. I have with me Most Reverend Philip Lazar Zahok, the Bishop of Lazio Diocese in Myanmar. Your Excellency, you are most welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? Fine. Very good. How did the Catholic faith begin in Myanmar? Well, Catholic faith actually began, uh, I would say, with the coming of uh, uh, Portuguese merchants. You know, in the early centuries, like in the 14, 15, 16, like the, the Portuguese explorers were well known in the Far East also. Mm. So, along with the merchants, there were priests serving uh, as chaplains to them. So especially in the west coast, uh, uh, Aragon, uh, and also in the Delta, uh, Syria, in those days, uh, Syria, just uh, close uh, by the present uh, Yangon uh, uh, city. There was a Syrian jetty okay. uh, well known for the Portuguese explorers. So, faith actually uh, began or arrived in Myanmar with these uh, Portuguese uh, merchants. So, um, what are some of the early missionaries that actually came to plant the faith in Myanmar? Yeah. yeah. The missionaries who were sent by the Holy See for evangelization were the uh, Barnabite uh, uh, fathers. Oh, okay. yeah. Barnabite fathers, they uh, actually laid uh, a solid foundation mm. of the Catholic faith in Myanmar, uh, I would say. They were the ones who invented the Burmese uh, writing uh, uh, prints. Wow. Yeah, in 1774, wow. uh, Monsignor Precoto, uh, he brought the Myanmar uh, alphabets to Italy and yeah, what you made the uh, lead uh, the letters, yeah, wow. the printed book. Wow. So the first printed books uh, were printed by these uh, Barnabite missionaries. Okay. Yeah. So they uh, labored uh, in lower and uh, central upper Burma mm -hmm. for a good number of years. But later on, uh, no new Panabai missionaries were able to uh, come up uh, due to many difficulties uh, uh, at home country also. And also there is a long way from Italy to, uh, to Myanmar. In those days no Suez Canal yet. They had to go down to mm -hmm. Africa. Now. So, a good number of uh, missionaries also perish in sea voyage. Trying to get to Myanmar. Yeah, yeah, like that. So later on, uh, no, uh, new Panapites were able to come. So uh, for a while, the Oblate Fathers also uh, contributed the uh, missionary work. But uh, very large later on, uh, uh, 
and EP, the Paris uh, 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 foreign missionaries uh, came in uh, uh, to Myanmar, to Malaysia, mm -hmm. I think that. So uh, the first uh, yeah, in Rangoon uh, and Mandalay and practically uh, lower upper Burma, uh, the French missionaries uh, work uh, for a good number of years. But later on, uh, because of the vastness of the uh, mission land, they uh, appeal to the Holy Father to send uh, more missionaries, other missionary congregations also. So in 19, in 1865, I think, the, the Foreign Missionary Institute of Milan, the Vatican's uh, official, official missionary institute, uh, came, they came to Tango, and establish the starting point there, and taking over that part from the MEP mission. And they expanded uh, to the east, uh, like that. So altogether now, um, what do you call the MEP missionaries also invited uh, Columban missionaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, through the Holy See. So the Columban missionaries uh, uh, from Ireland came in 1936. And also the Lazarus missionaries uh, from US also came in 1937, I think. Yeah, and Lazarus. Uh, and also there were religious uh, congregations uh, called the Salvations. And the solutions also came in the uh, set up schools and vocational uh, training centers like that. Uh, so the missionaries' uh, work really flourished yeah, to among more among the different uh, ethnic minority groups. tribes, uh, races, and ethnic groups. Yeah, like a chin, a chin, kayin, kaya, uh, nahu, akha. So, so today, uh, the ethnic groups uh, are majority, I would say, Christians. Uh, this missionary work uh, did not uh, flourish much among the majority. Burmans who profess Buddhism. We'll be, we'll be looking at um, that that's later on. We'll be looking at the relationship between the Catholic and then the Buddhist, Catholic and other Christian communities um, back in Myanmar. But let me ask you about the contribution of the Society of um, Columbans or the Columban missionaries. How well were they able to help the faith grow? Yeah. When the Columbans came in 1936, uh, they were given that uh, virgin land, so to say, of the north, mm -hmm. mainly the north, among the Kachins. So at that time, uh, very, very few uh, uh, Christians there. Mm -hmm. By far, about 90% or more would be uh, still animists. Uh, what he calls spiritism. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when the Columbans came uh, in 1936, they evangelized, they engaged themselves uh, in direct evangelization through the proclamation of the gospel. And also they start uh, setting up uh, schools, oh. primary school, middle school, and high school. So uh, through this uh, education, uh, uh, conversion uh, from spiritism to animism to uh, Celtic faith or Christianity 
what you call took place faster. Uh, so within a few years, uh, uh, the Catholic uh, population, the population grew, grew. Uh, and also the Kalambas were very good, I would say, uh, in learning uh, local languages and also not only languages but trying to understand understand their customs, mm -hmm. their mentalities. So they uh, actually integrated into the yeah, community to be able yeah, to help yeah, them. Yeah, they were very good in adapting themselves into the local uh, uh, culture, allowing them uh, some of the popular uh, dances, uh, what they call connected with liturgy, like that. So that made a, a very good means of uh, speeding up the missionary work. Is it as easy as you are saying it? Was it that easy for them to be able to, or the other missionaries to be able to integrate themselves into? Uh, well, uh, not that uh, easy. Uh, uh, I'm sure they would. Uh, other missionaries also they try their best, but uh, what happens is in the past the uh, what do you call Ponson, the French missionaries mm -hmm. have a very vast uh, oh. uh, mission territory, mm -hmm. so they are a sort of a one priest to another is far away, like so they may not uh, uh, what do you call Connect. they would find it yeah they would find it harder. And also, uh, at the beginning, uh, a lot of uh, illnesses, mm. no hospital, no medicine, and uh, things like that. So when the Columbans came, they were allotted that uh, power, especially at uh, that region, the Kachin state. So they were close to one another. Oh. Uh, so in that way, they also encourage one another, and also they also share uh, mission experiences and uh, things like that, and then uh, they uh, get more strength maybe, and then uh, with the opening up of schools, uh, a lot of uh, young people come to stay with them and they learn uh, faster uh, and things like that. Yeah, Grace, let me ask you, what's the Catholic population in Myanmar? The Catholic population uh, is uh, about uh, 700,000. Okay, 700,000. Let us look at the relationship between Catholics and then. I know Buddhism is the majority, they are the majority. Let's look at the ecumenical relationship be, be, between the two. How is it like? I would say the relation between the uh, Catholic Church, Catholics and the, the Buddhist uh, population uh, is good. Uh, you know, the Buddhism uh, is a very broad-minded, so to say, religion who can uh, live uh, quite peacefully with other religions. Uh, but we do have. Uh, in uh, what are some fundamentalists who tend to think or do to the extreme and we do have but the general population uh, the dealing with uh, Catholics and other Christian churches uh, is good. So do you actually organize programs between the Catholic Church and then the Buddhist community? Do you actually have programs together? Um, we don't have a program together uh, much, uh, but uh, of recent uh, years, uh, in order to prevent uh, uh, what they call fundamentalism, uh, fundamentalism or extremism, yeah. uh, we uh, try our best to uh, 
to create or to do some activities uh, uh, with Buddhism on Sangha. On certain occasions, we invited uh, we invite Buddhist monks mm -hmm. uh, and we feed them according to their rituals. Oh. Yeah. We ask some of the Buddhist elders to uh, to do the the rituals yes. because we provide food or uh, preparation things. That. And so in that way, and also we ask them to pray for peace, something like that. From San last year, mm -hmm. uh, coinciding with my uh, party, and also it coincides with the uh, uh, Union Day, which is a, a commons, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? Uh, so, you know? so I invited uh, Buddhist monks and also some uh, Protestant pastors and also Muslim uh, mullahs and also Hindu. Then we pray in our cathedral wow. uh, for peace, mm -hmm. uh, for peace uh, in the country. That's so, very beautiful. Yeah, and also whenever we have a big occasion like uh, ordination of priests or diocese jubilee, then uh, we arrange uh, uh, what you call feeding mm. uh, to the Buddhist monks mm. uh, as a token of. Uh, love as a token of uh, peace and gratitude wow. to God and to all. Yeah. That's so beautiful. But is it the same between the Catholics and then the other political star community back in Myanmar? Uh, other um, uh, Pentecostals in the Protestant, the, the Protestants are uh, all together, put together are much uh, more numerous than Catholic population. Uh, uh, according to many Buddhists who express, I think, they are more in harmony with the Catholic Church because they say there are many similarities, but for instance, we use rosary in praying, whereas the Buddhists also they use beads, in uh, the, the, the Buddhist uh, uh, beads, uh, and also they have monks who uh, celebrate uh, at least at the, at the time when they are uh, when they adorn themselves with the robe. No, they are not. Uh, uh, they don't lead a married life, and also they have. Uh, Buddhist nuns, and we also have a sisters. <laughs> uh, so in that way, uh, we are not far from each other. Yeah, yeah, and also the Protestants are more aggressive in proselytizing, mm. but we, the Catholic Church, uh, don't proselytize. Uh, we don't boldly uh, tell someone who is a non-Catholic. Uh, come and join us, things that we do uh, say. Whereas the Protestants are a bit more aggressive in trying to uh, uh, yeah, uh, grab by force. Yeah, so that they don't like. Mm. Uh, and also in the past, we also now, so the Catholic Church have uh, got more centers for uh, charitable work, like orphanage. Uh, uh, dispensaries, uh, especially those days before nationalization of schools and uh, other charitable centers, and we have many. Can you put a percentage on uh, the number of schools, the number of hospitals, the number of at, at least the social <coughs> works that uh, the Catholic Church is involved back in? Uh, right now, I cannot. Uh, of it. Uh, about yeah. about yeah, for in, uh, in the country we don't have m many, but a few that we have uh, uh, high school were very well known, like the Lasalle brothers would have about uh, ten or or ten high schools and uh, also middle school and also other 
sister, like St. Joseph of the Apparitions. Okay. Uh, they have been involved in education uh, since uh, 1800, uh, they have, uh, some years ago they celebrated 150th anniversary. Uh, wow. And also uh, the Revelation Sisters, the Kalamban Sisters, and the different missionary society, the Salations have got uh, uh, middle, primary, high school, maybe about a hundred. Uh, so there are a lot of social uh, works yeah, yeah, actually being yeah, done by. Yeah, yeah. That's but uh, sadly to say, in 1965, all these primary, middle, high school, uh, and also hospital things are always nationalized, closed down. And how did that come to the church? Was your properties be Was it nationalized with your uh, consent? Uh, all of a sudden, uh, without uh, being told ahead, uh, the, the military gave us a good data, good data military, uh, the army. Mm, yeah, uh, taking over, uh, seizing power. Yeah, in 1962. And then, 62, so the socialists. Uh, actually military, the socialists came up and uh, they started uh, slowly uh, confiscating, nationalizing uh, private shops, big, big one shops. Oh. And later on in 1965, uh, all schools and uh, uh, all schools, yeah. previous to that hospital and other charitable institutions. That, that. So now, only uh, with the coming back of democracy, we hope to uh, start again slowly. Let me ask you, um, is Myanmar a peaceful state? Myanmar obtained uh, independence from, the, from, the, from Britain okay. in 1948. Uh, since uh, the time of independence, uh, there were some factions uh, and some went underground as uh, uh, insurgents. So, I wouldn't say uh, Myanmar was a really peaceful state at any time, uh, but uh, Comparatively to, uh, to a certain extent, from the time of uh, 1948 to 1960, uh, 62, was uh, in greater part of the country quite peaceful. Mm. Uh, quite peaceful. But uh, in 1962, uh, our people, Kachins also, uh, started a, a movement of independence by forming KIA, the Chinese okay. Independence Army. Uh, so they start uh, claiming for equal right and for independence. Okay. And, and slowly other ethnic uh, races like uh, Shams and Kaya and uh, Karins, uh, they were earlier. Uh, they started uh, almost uh, uh, one or two years after independence, Karins. So many ethnic groups uh, later on uh, uh, started an uh, independence movement, uh, fighting for equal rights right, uh, and at least for federal autonomous uh, state because uh, if in order to gain uh, independence uh, General Aung San, uh, the father of the uh, present uh, what do you call Aung San Suu Kyi, mm -hmm. he organized the different ethnic groups, races uh, and that uh, he promised that when there is independence from Britain. Uh, the different races uh, would be given uh, a federal state. 
I think that that God is. So uh, they sign no. Bandung Agreement. So Bandung Agreement. But that Bandung Agreement signed in 1947, uh, just a few months before actual independence uh, came. That Bandung Agreement has not been fulfilled mm. up to date. Mm. So, basing on this uh, Bandung Agreement, the different ethnic groups are now fighting for independence. Mm. At least, federal autonomous state, that each state, each region should be free to uh, decide uh, for themselves. Uh, yeah. So um, what is a check against something in line of this issue so that there will be a total peace? Uh, for us, uh, the church uh, doesn't really get involved in the politics, uh, but uh, the church is uh, with the people, uh, whatever, uh, we don't say that uh, uh, what they are fighting for is uh, totally wrong, but uh, the church is more uh, what you call that uh, each race should uh, put more emphasis on education and uh, more people of different ethnic groups uh, involved in the in the different government departments. Okay. And and now with the forming of a parliament, uh, the the what do you call it, the asking the acquiring of a uh, rights and equality should be done more uh, through this parliamentary dialogue, debating uh, things that. So the church uh, do not uh, does not uh, encourage uh, or approve uh, the use of uh, uh, weapons uh, uh, for fighting uh, equal rights. So Francis actually visited Myanmar. When he was coming, how was it like and what has been the effect after his visits? Uh, Pope Francis uh, came to Myanmar at the invitation of uh, the government as well as uh, the bishops conference. Uh, before his coming, uh, many would be uh, were sort of uh, wondering what could be the result, whether they could be uh, protests or uh, things like that. Uh, but uh, the whole thing went very smoothly. And then at the end of uh, uh, his uh, visit, uh, the, what you call, the feedback uh, that we get from uh, others, including the Buddhists, uh, and other uh, denominations and other religions were very uh, positive. Mm. Yeah. All were happy that uh, it went on very smoothly. And the impression uh, uh, left behind was a very uh, good impression. Concerned one uh, Buddhist uh, taxi driver when he was sending me to the airport. Uh, he started the conversation, not I, but his, uh, his comment was all one of admiration. Uh -huh. uh, he said uh, so many, about uh, 200,000 people being gathered in a field and before the Pope's uh, arrival uh, there were some uh, noise, not protest, noise of uh, joy yeah. and this and that. When the Pope comes into the field for this, this Eucharistic celebration, all the waving uh, hands and mm -hmm. flags and this and that, and then very joyfully. But when there was an announcement uh, to be silent for worship, 
there was a total there, silence. A total silence. Uh, this thing, and then uh, they said uh, very uh, devoutly, uh, they pray, they sing, uh, everything is uh, well disciplined, uh, things like that. So uh, he said uh, in, in Buddhist uh, gathering for religious feasts or anything, we couldn't imagine uh, such gathering uh, uh, finishing without any mishaps, but uh, with you, nothing. We did not hear any fight. We did not hear any body uh, uh, dead or something like that. So, very. And then the Pope's message was all for peace and reconciliation. So, so they. Uh, the aftermath of this uh, Pope's visit uh, has uh, promoted uh, the good impression of the Catholic Church. Catholic Church. And then more people came to know about uh, the existence and uh, the existence of the Catholic Church. And I remember reading quite a lengthy comment on Facebook written by a Protestant pastor. Mm -hmm. And nothing of criticism, but all of something to be imitated uh, in the from the book. Thank you so much, Bruce Robin. Thank you. Thank you. Of last year of the houses in my, Myanmar. We have been looking at the church, we have been looking at the relationship between the Catholic community and the Buddhist community, the relationship between the Catholic church and other Protestants, and how um, Myanmar is whether peaceful or not. And I'm so happy that you've been able to be part of this program. God bless you. Bless you. Make a day with the same time next week. Bye. This program was sponsored by Safe Life Experience Consort Limited. Contact them for all your travel and tour needs, as well as your events.